Okay, so here's a question for you. What do you think the difference is between these two lenses? Now, this is an SI lens, this is a non-SI lens, but they're both wide angles. But can you tell the difference between these two? If not, that's okay, because that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this video. What's up y'all, it's a Project Photography back with another video and today people, today, Nikon has come out with some really incredible non-SI lenses. Some of them I've used, such as the Nikon 17-28 f2.8, the 28mm f2.8, as well as the 24-200. to And these have all been incredible lenses that I've made reviews on and have had raving, raving opinions about because they are honestly really good lenses. But if they're so incredible, then what's the point of even having these SI lenses in the first place? And to answer that question, we really need to go back to when Nikon was making F-mount lenses with the gold badge, if you guys remember. And it wasn't that long ago when these lenses were the absolute powerhouses of the camera industry, having some of the best image quality with some of the best specs and just making pros want to switch over to Nikon because Nikon just had some of the best glass in the industry. These lenses in every way, shape or form were better than their non gold ring counterparts and they had better autofocus performance. They had better image quality. They had better specs in general like F1.4s and so forth that the just non gold ring lenses just simply didn't have. And fast forwarding today in the Nikon Z mount with these Z lenses, we have the non S line versus the S line lenses, which is the equivalent of the gold versus the non gold ring lenses. And here's the thing, we have seen Nikon come out with budget F 2.8 lenses, which was simply just unheard of even a decade ago. We have lenses like the 17 to 28 F 2.8 and the 28 to 75 F 2.8. Even on the Nikon roadmap, we have a lens that is the 70 to 180 F 2.8. Now I know some of you guys consider these as Tamron rebadges, but here's the thing, they still have the Nikon moniker on it and they are still in the Nikon Z roadmap. And I'm so incredibly excited for when that lens comes out because I know a lot of people are gonna be really enjoying the budget and the versatility of a lens like that. And to top it all off with the incredible specs of the lenses we have, we have amazing autofocus performance in all of the lenses across the board. If you're picking up a Nikon Z lens, you know the autofocus performance is gonna be amazing. And on top of it, the sharpness in these lenses are absolutely stunning. So why even buy a Nikon S lens in the year 2023? And to answer that question, we really need to do a deep dive into you know, what makes an S line lens because I feel like that's something really important that a lot of people really need to understand where they're looking at the S line versus non S line lenses to understand the real difference. The biggest difference between the S line lenses and the non S line lenses isn't specs or autofocus performance or even sharpness for that matter because we've seen the non S line lenses have incredible sharpness, but it's rather just the overall image quality that the S line lenses produce. And let me put it to you this way. The Nikon 50 millimeter F 1.8 S is the greatest 50 millimeter lens that I have ever used. The 14 to 30 F 4 S is the best wide angle lens I've used period. And I've used so many over the years. And the Nikon 24 to 70 F 2.8 S is the greatest lens period that I've ever used. But what makes these lenses so special? I think for me, what it is, is that the image quality is just so phenomenally amazing. I think people really like the Nikon gold ring lenses a lot back in the day because they had really incredible characteristics about the lens. They just look stunning. They felt like pieces of art every time you use them, but in turn, they might sacrifice some you know, performance in terms of sharpness when it comes to the stop down apertures. But with these lenses, we're seeing that it's just simply not the case. We have the insane artistry that these lenses produce with insane sharpness at wide open. We have incredible colors. And my favorite part is the micro contrast. Straight out of camera when you're shooting with the S line lenses, the micro contrast is simply stunning and it looks amazing. And you can feel like the image just pops right out of the camera. And the qualities that these lenses produce are only qualities that I personally think that professional photographers are going to appreciate and enjoy. I think if you're like an amateur photographer you're not really able to notice a lot of these different characteristics about the lens that make these lenses in particular so unique you're going to appreciate more of the budget and versatility of something like a non si lens that these s line lenses are simply just going to be more expensive 
But I think for the professional photographer, they're gonna love the artistry that comes out of these lenses. They have such a unique feel to the lenses that I just simply have not felt or experienced before. They almost remind me of what made Carl Zeiss so good back in the day. The insane, beautiful image quality, the vibrant colors, the micro contrast that just made the images pop so much. These lenses embody a lot of those features that the Carl Zeiss lenses had. And I don't make that comparison lightly because Carl Zeiss is easily one of my favorite lens manufacturers. They have one of my most favorite lenses of all time, the 50 millimeter F 1.4 Discogon. That was an incredible lens that I just absolutely loved. But I think this is a big reason why we're seeing such a big improvement in the non S line department because these lenses are just so insanely sharp, even for having such a budget price point, and they're just so hard to beat on a budget scale. And here's the thing, with incredible image quality just across the board and good performance across the board, we're able to get really good lenses at a budget price point that's a lot cheaper that everyone can afford. Everyone has access to f2.8s now. If you really want an f2.8, you can go out and get that 28 to 75 f2.8 at a really budget price point rather than spending the you know $2,200 that a S line 24 to 70 would give you. But if you're that pro that appreciates the image and just how the images look straight at a camera and you want perfection every single image, you're just gonna go with the 24 to 70, not because of the f2.8 aperture or the focal length for even that matter, but rather because what the images provide you. So because the S-Line lenses are actually getting so good and so incredible, and the non s line lenses are getting even better and cheaper and more affordable than ever, right now is the best time to get into photography than ever. Like I said, with these lenses, the S-Line versus the non s line it doesn't matter what you pick up because at the end of the day, there's no excuse for creating amazing images nowadays because just of how good these lenses are. But if you really can appreciate the fine detail and the artistry that comes with an S-Line lens, you're really gonna love them to death because for me personally, I have not sold any of my S-Line lenses since I bought them. All the S-Line lenses that I have have been here since the moment I purchased them and I, I just absolutely love them. So like I said, it's not about the specs, it's not about the autofocus performance and it's not even about the sharpness. It's about how well these lenses perform optically, how beautiful and stunning the images are. You just don't get that out of the non S-Line lenses. So anyways, guys, let me know what your favorite S-Line lens is down in the comment section down below. For me, it's easily the 24 to 70 f2.8. Just such a stunning lens. I, I've, I remember when I just picked up that lens and used it for the first time, I was just so blown away by how good the images were. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for experiencing the world with me. Please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.